two Americans love more than guns and freedom. That's right, goddamn oil. So today, the United States of America will be invading Rimworld to destroy the Empire and take control of their oil. Under the leadership of General Kibbles Jack, self-insert, self-insert, the Americans built up their base, started oil production, and expanded their numbers with aggressive recruitment tactics. When recruitment was complete, we were ready to take on the Empire. However, the closest Imperial base to us will take 8.8 .8 days of travel time. We need to cut that time down, so what's the plan? A high-speed rail network? <laughs> yeah, no. This gas-guzzling Humvee? Absolutely. The morning of our first battle, we took part in the most sacred of American traditions. Firing our guns, and worshipping our corporate overlords. With our army of 10 troops ready, we sent them off to begin the war. Upon our arrival at the Imperial base, we need a reason to start a war against them. A reason that will get the people going so they will be on our side throughout the war. The Empire has and is producing WMDs. The assault starts. Once those Imperial scum are within our range, our Humvee lays down impressive fire. Not suppressive, impressive. Like goddamn they are hurling an impressive amount of lead down range. Uh, the Humvee just lost most of its HP. Oh, that's not good. Uh, uh. Tanya, where's your rifle? Just, just pick one up. Uh-oh! So, we lost our army, in a defeat worse than the entire Vietnam War. But hey, look on the bright side. This might solve our low food problem. You need soldiers to fight a war, so America has to restart our recruitment programs. Wolf guy needs help out of prison? Sure, we'll free you if you join up. Watch a bison and get a soldier? Hell yeah, brother, we'll do that. Except some refugees that might join the army? Sure, absolutely. Uh, buying people? We were slowly regaining our superpower level fighting force when the Empire attacked. Oh, I forgot. There's a defoliator ship outside our base that I've just been ignoring. Let's give them a 105 millimeter wake up call so the robots and the Imperials fight each other. After that, continue the shelling. In true American fashion, our artillery hit some innocent people in the area, ruining our relations with their country. And by defense, why the hell are you strolling around in a war zone? I blame them. Well, we're out of artillery shells and the Empire is setting up their own mortars. So we need to launch a counterattack to take out their mortars before something important gets hit. Them sons of bitches hit our oil wells. And our Humvee was destroyed. And my self-insert is dead. We have to pull back our soldiers after one went down. Oh look, another drop. Oh, he's getting a free trip to be tortured by the Imperium. Bye Murat, have fun. We finally killed enough of the Empire's attack force to send them running with their tails tucked behind their legs. No offense, Ocean. The good news is, we destroyed the defoliator and we captured two other soldiers with high shooting stats. You Imperials might have roughed us up a little bit with this here raid, but I promise y'all that you are gonna regret messing with us, cause you made one big mistake, bucko. You fucked with our oil. After liberating the base from before with freedom, we began our military campaign on the top right of the map. If we clear out the remaining two Imperial bases, the rest will be beneath us, both figuratively and literally. On our way to the next Imperial base, we stopped by at the nearby tribal base for fun. Once the base was destroyed, we were back on our way to fight the Imperials. This Imperial base is different from the last, as they have a mortar. We need to use our armored vehicles to take that out, so our pretty little soldiers don't learn what it is like to take 81 millimeters of boom boom to the chest. 
our vehicles advanced, engaging the Imperials who quite foolishly left the cover around their base. They're not the smartest of enemies. Despite being as dumb as I am, they took out the Bradley. That wasn't nice, that was my second favorite armored vehicle. After enough Imperials were manifest destiny to the afterlife, they began to flee. But the base wasn't destroyed. The base wasn't destroyed because there is one Imperial left, and he has an RPG. Absolutely no way is my tank to engage him first. Send in the Expendables. Once they engaged and skillfully dodged all the lone Imperial's RPGs, our tank engaged to finish him off. Slowly. It took a while as this dude had extremely good armor and it took a lot of freedom to kill him. I think my soldiers deserve a warm meal after their victory. Just kidding, they don't have any food. We never leave a soldier behind when they're hungry. So we load up the helicopter with some nice heart destroying fast food and ship it out to the troops. By the way, you will need to pay a convenience fee, a delivery fee, a helicopter fee, a RimWorld fee, a cool tank fee, an America fee, and a flying fee, so your total of $20 worth of food comes out to $273.69. Oh, and would you like to add a tip? Wars are expensive. We lose vehicles and soldiers die in combat with expensive equipment. We have to constantly replace them using steel, components, chem fuel, plus steel, etc. We do our best mining and producing these resources, but ultimately we have to buy a lot of them. I was talking with some of the guys in the CIA and they gave me this cool life hack where we convert our hydroponics basins that produce food for us in the winter into cycloid growing farms. We take the leaves produced and turn it into yayo. We then sell the yayo to the nearby tribal bases and use the profit to fund our wars. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. I would like to make a correction to what I previously said and clarify that it was not the CIA I was talking to. Do I, do I need to read this? Okay. The CIA would never sell drugs. Anyway, once the drug production was finished, we loaded the Yayo up on our helicopter. Yeah, that, that is a kid loading cocaine onto our war machine. Just move past it. We take off and go to sell the drugs to the tribals. But it's not giving us an option to trade. It does display one option. I resisted my natural instincts to slaughter the tribals, and since I can't trade with the helicopter, we're taking the tank. Oh, I hope nobody ambushes us. Oh no. With our newly acquired parts, we built back up our armored division to a new level with even more vehicles than before. By more, I mean just one additional Bradley. Which is enough vehicles to warrant an attack on the last Imperial base in the top right. The sooner we wipe them out, the sooner our great nation has exclusive rights to the oil on the planet. Our invasion force advances on the Imperials in a combined arms assault. This base, like the last, has a mortar. However, unlike the last attack, our soldiers get to experience the 81 millimeters of boom boom that I hyped up earlier. Turns out, it's not a good time. While the wounded are being treated by our medics, the armored vehicles advanced, shielding the infantry from the full might of the Empire, and sacrificing themselves in the process. By the end of the battle, the area was littered with several injured enemies who weren't fortunate enough to have been killed by the mighty United States. Don't worry though, we made sure to assist them with their immigration process to the afterlife. With the top of the map now void of the Empire, we can focus our efforts on the eight remaining bases to the south. For the next few bases, I think I'm gonna switch up my strategy. The United States of America has already mastered ground combat with our superior infantry and armor. But what about air combat? We put our top scientists to work, researching new ways to kill people instead of researching something lame, like, I don't know, new and improved medicines. After the nerds figured out the logistics, we built Lady Death the Savage Attack Helicopter, and her Dami Mami sister, the AH-1 Cobra. I think these bad bitches are ready to spread freedom across RimWorld. Unfortunately, the helicopters have a limited range. And for whatever reason, the mod I'm using does not allow helicopters to land on their own. We dispatch a small group of soldiers in the tank to set up camp around the halfway point to the Western Imperial base. We load up the helis with extra chem fuel, processed from our very own oil fields. 
we send the helicopters to meet up with the dispatched soldiers at their camp to land and refuel. Even after refueling, they still aren't within range. So I moved the tank squad's camp a little closer and landed the helis by them again for another pit stop. They're now within range of the Imperial base. We initiated our deadly strike from the skies, mercilessly wiping out all of the Imperials. But we didn't receive a base destruction notification. I tried landing and having the pilots execute the survivors as that might be causing the problem. The base still isn't destroyed. I think it's bugged. I reloaded my save and this time waited for the tank squad to arrive and start the attack on the off chance that a normal caravan has to attack for the base to be destroyed. The base still has not been defeated. Yeah, I'm pretty confident I got them all. That's just my luck, a glitched Imperial base. We will have to try again later. Unfortunately, my helicopters don't have enough fuel for both of them to get back to base. Honestly, I don't know if there's even enough for one. So we ditched the chopper I liked the least and sent the other one to start its journey back home. That's when I discovered something. The remaining chopper can refuel from its inventory at bases around the map. I wish I knew that earlier. Now that I am aware of the existence of this button, we built a second Cobra to replace the helicopter I left behind. I'm going to use these two choppers as my muscle for the next few bases to the south. We organized a scouting party with the Humvee and a few soldiers and sent them to the next closest Imperial base. I will explain in a minute why they are being sent along with the helicopters. Once the attack on the fort is initiated by the scouting party, their job is basically complete as they can just sit at the edge of the map in relative safety. The flying carriers of death and destruction make their approach, wiping out all of the Imperials who dare to face them. And like always, when enough of those scum are killed, they start to flee. But like the glitched one from before, this base is also not destroyed. But I know why. And it's all the damn helicopters fault. Before this assault, I reloaded my save again and again and again, testing different methods to destroy these bases. I discovered that the helicopters existing on the map prevents the bases from being destroyed. Once I send both of them away, look at that, the base has been destroyed. This is why I sent a scouting party, to take the base after the helis leave. I take back what I said about being kinda dumb earlier, as now my brain is swelling from me becoming more smarter. Now, you might ask yourself, how did you take that base from before? And why didn't the glitched base get captured when the Cobra left? Well, that's easy. The base I took with the helicopter earlier was actually an accident. You see, I loaded up the wounded on the helicopter and sent them back to base for treatment, accidentally taking the base before I realized there was a problem. In the glitch base, I abandoned one of the bad bitches on the map, so it was impossible to take the base while it was sitting there. Now that I've figured out how to get around the problem, the helicopters are back on the list of things I can use. These helicopters are going to require a lot of chem fuel for their combative journeys across the map. So the United States builds more refineries that convert oil into chem fuel. This justifies the fact that we are forcibly taking land to extract oil to convert into chem fuel so we can fuel our weapons to seize more territory and oil. Huh. Kinda looks like a self-made circle of events. Are, are we the bad guys? We launch our next battle group, consisting of two attack helicopters and the Huey. The helicopters arrive and slaughter all the Imperials defending their homes, including the ones that tried to run. Once the area was safe, we land the Huey and offload Anna. We then fly all three helicopters out of the base, taking it instantly as the last one leaves. The Huey then returns to take Anna back home. Huh? Uh, they're gone. Rip, Ocean, Anna, and that other guy on the helicopter. I'm an impatient little bitch and don't want to wait the couple of days it takes to drive a scout party back and forth from these Imperial bases in a Humvee or a tank. We need a new reliable way to fly our scouts to the bases that our helicopters eliminate given that this helicopter mod is buggier than DreamWorks ants. You might be thinking, Kibbles, my sweet prince, you could just stop using helicopters. My well-crafted response to you adorable chinchillas saying that is, no. Look, Dropship has been researched. I wonder what this tech does. Is it A, allows me to build a dropship, or B, something else? It's A, 
if you picked B, well, yeah, it's gonna be a yikes for me, dog. I used these dropships in a previous video where I bullied some tribals, so you have my personal guarantee they work. I'm left scratching my head trying to figure out how we're gonna be able to afford to build it, as it is a wee bit expensive. Oh yeah, we sell drugs. Thinking of drugs, that kid you saw earlier loading illegal narcotics onto our helicopter, he grew up. Happy birthday. Here is your uniform, now kill for your country. We cleared an area for the dropship, and some of our workers got a little too passionate about their work. But they did the job and made a perfect sized area for our new toy. A toy that can comfortably reach anywhere on the map without having to bounce like the helicopters. It's time for the dropship's first trial run. We bounced the choppers over to an Imperial stronghold and began unaliving them. For the most part, it was smooth sailing, except for this Imperial bastard who had EMP rounds in their gun. Even with those pesky EMP rounds, our helis came out victorious. All we have to do now is load up the dropship and send it over. After the dropship landed, we send the helicopters away and the base is ours. Then they all return home to rearm and refuel. We sent them back out and were able to use them to claim many Imperial bases. I have one last project for this military campaign, and that is even more air power. We research tech that allows us to build jets, but unlike the helis, jets need space to take off and land. I put our faithful patriots to work, constructing a runway for our new weapon of war. I have selected veteran soldier turned veteran pilot Val as the pilot to lead America into a new age of prosperity. He lines up his approach, unleashing onto the Imperials a volley of lead and an explosive payload. That is until his plane is stunned out of the sky by EMP rounds. Don't worry about it, Val can just take off and stunned again. Yeah, I, I can still take off. I'm gonna be honest Val, I think you're gonna die. So we lost the plane, big deal. We need to think bigger. And by bigger, I mean a Pegasus gunship. This is what having an $877 billion military budget is all about. This beautiful flying symbol of freedom is armed with three weapons. First, a 20 millimeter rotary gun loaded with high explosive armor piercing rounds. Second, a 30 millimeter auto cannon. And finally, the Hellfire Cannon, which is basically an artillery gun we fire out the side of a plane. Once the plane is fueled and ready, it takes off and heads towards its first Imperial victim. Like a sledgehammer in the sky, the gunship efficiently kills every last Imperial. Now we just have to land and refuel while we wait for the dropship to arrive. We then set a course for our next target, leaving a destroyed base in our wake. One thing I adore about this Beacon of Freedom is that she carries enough ammo to make multiple attacks in a single outing. Death and destruction follow when this beast of a plane attacks. And with the south base destroyed, we have one base left, the glitched base from before. I slaughtered them like animals. And when the Imperials gave up what little hope they had left, they fled but we made sure to hunt down every last one, finally wiping out the last remnants of the Empire. With our war over, we loaded up some of our old vehicles and equipment to sell to our new found allies. Turns out a lot of other nations hated the Imperium too. We're arming our allies so they can fight the remaining raiders, pirates, and other scum that exist on the planet, while we extract as much oil as possible and send it off world. That is, until we abandon this planet and search for another oil-rich planet for America to spread its freedom. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video or are a really cool person, you should check out my last video where I built up an army of Pokemon in RimWorld, using them to eliminate my enemies and take on each of the three Mechanitor bosses. <gasps> the video is right there.